lot of changes in football this year. Oregon, USC joining the Big Ten. What? No Nick Saban, the legend. Or Jim Harbaugh, now he's with the Chargers. Michigan, who's won the Big Ten for three straight years, loses their coach, their quarterback, 17 starters. Here's their new head coach, Sharon Moore. Win the big games, beat our rivals, beat Ohio State. Win the Big Ten, go to college football playoff and win it. Everything we do every day is a process, and we'll continue to strive to do that. And we'll continue to do that with contagious enthusiasm, unknown to mankind. Hmm. Now that's a detail-oriented guy I can tell Ooh. by the hairline. Hey, Paul, how we doing? We're doing great. Uh, Molly, uh, it was so nice to hear a coach uh, not make excuses. Uh, I, I almost fell out of my chair here listening oh, to that, unlike some of the other go. guys in the Big Ten. <laughs> there we go. You know what, Paul? There were some, I'm not going to name names, some tough press conferences. There was some tough sound in, in, your, in your sport this week. I will just leave it at that. But, Paul, in all seriousness, obviously I just mentioned the new names in the Big Ten, you know, losing Harbaugh, losing your quarterback, which is huge, in 17 starters. Do you think Michigan Michigan will even make the college football playoff? I think they have a shot. Uh, right now, I would take them. And to do that really uh, means they're, they're going to have to change, change the outcome of a couple of games that right now they would be favored to lose. I mean, they've got an early game second week against Texas, which will be a top three or four team. They have Oregon later in the year at home, another top three team. Obviously, we know about Ohio State at the end. And and I think uh, if, if, they can, if they can win either Texas, Oregon, or Washington, uh, they, they can finish 10-2. and two. They may have to win two of those, by the way, because I don't think they're going to beat Ohio State. I think 9-3, and three, depending on where the wins are, uh, this would be probably the rare team that could make the playoff with more than two losses. Paul and I have them in the same wheelhouse, right around three losses. I have them losing three, which is why I would say they're not going to make the playoff because I don't think the wins are going to be impressive enough. I've got them as dogs in three games this season. The Texas game, the Oregon game, and obviously the Ohio State game, which for anyone who's paying attention, they opened up as a small maybe four or five-point dog in that game. That thing is ballooned to ten. They are a double-digit underdog against Ohio State this year. Now, on top of that, they have a daunting trip at Washington. Washington will be down a little yeah. bit this year because of everything they lost, but that's not going to be easy for Michigan, especially when you consider all the losses. Number one, the Hall of Fame head coach, gone. Number two, only seven starters returning across the offense and defense, one of which is on the offensive side of the ball. Just one, and it's not the quarterback who was selected in the top ten. Michigan's going to be formidable. They're going to be feisty, and the big question will be after this year, which is going to be a step back, are they going to be able to build and be a perennial contender? But I think this year, the way everything stacks up, three losses at least, and I don't think the rest of the resume will be enough to get them into the back end of the playoff. Paul, I want to call an audible here really quick. I'm just curious for the casual football fans, right? Yeah, no, no, no. It's nothing to be nervous about, Paul. You got this. But for the casual <laughs> football fans, when we're talking about that are just watching the big marquee games, right? You know, tuning in on ABC, tuning in on Fox to those big matchups. What are some storylines and what are some things we should really be watching for this upcoming season? Listen, I'm not promoting the network because I work there, but it starts on Sunday night of the first weekend. And, and Joe and I are going to have fun watching this game because the loser better watch out. We're talking about LSU and Southern Cal in Vegas. Now, wow. I think we've hashed out the, the, the Lincoln-Riley situation ad nauseum, but imagine losing that game. Uh, I guess he'll try the, well, I'm not a magician line again, Molly, that you like so yeah. much. Yeah. But what about the other side of that? I, I know everybody thinks I, I waved the flag of the, of the SEC. I just happen to work at the SEC network. But Brian Kelly, he better win that game. Uh, I mean, Brian Kelly has done a really nice job, but he, he left Notre Dame a couple years ago to win a national championship. And last year, uh, the, the losses started piling up but with a terrible defense. It sounds familiar for Lincoln Riley, even with a generational quarterback in Jaden Daniels. So that is the game to keep your eye on week one. And I mentioned the Texas game. Uh, there, there's a tricky game, Joe. I don't know what you think about this game the third week of the season. Alabama goes on the road for the first time to Madison. They ought to win the game, but it's still a little bit tricky when, when Southern teams go north, even in September.
Yeah, early in the year, and Alabama's got several road games that are right in that wheelhouse this year. You want to believe Luke Fickle, like, we were very excited about him going to Wisconsin, and then when is it going to be the point where he takes the next step forward? It's going to take some time to get his system in, build what he wants to do there, and get away from what was done there previously. So I think that's an interesting one. You're talking early in the season, Paul. I'm surprised you didn't bring up Georgia and Clemson and what that's going to mean for the loser, that's which is most likely going to be Clemson because they have Florida State on the schedule later. I believe that's a road game. Seminoles bringing in DJ Uyunglele this season. You lose to Georgia and you lose bad early in the year. The pro side for Clemson is, well, the rest of the schedule sets up relatively easy. It's not too bad. They can rebound. But if you lose the Florida State game as well, there aren't a lot of quality wins on there. Virginia Tech would be one. NC State's on there. But there's not a whole lot that Clemson's going to be able to hang their hat on if they get run out of the building by Georgia and then struggle against Florida State. And, Joe, final word here. They are going to get run out of the building by Georgia. <laughs> and you mentioned Clemson. I, I, forgot, I, forgot they, I forgot they still play football. Is, is Dabo Sweeney in a missing persons uh, bulletin right now? Because oh they had the ACC media days, and usually Dabo controls the theater. And I don't remember a single thing he said because he's still complaining about everything that's, that's wrong with college football while his program slips into mediocrity. Hey, at least you have Sharon Moore, okay? So you have that to, to hang your hat on. Uh, the, I, that LSU-SC Vegas week one, that is epic. And I just have to say, Paul, Ooh. and I know you'll co-sign. You've worked with Joe quite a bit. Joe, I am so impressed with you. No, seriously, How? I have never done this show. I've never done this show with you. And sitting in Stephen A's chair, he even tweeted about it. And seriously, like, you really know your you-know-what, but, like, on everything – just hearing you hang on every single subject. It's like you actually do your homework. It's how, unbelievable. How low were your expectations coming in, if I may ask? Well, it's hard to get people that can, like, speak, like, on everything. Give me something. Give me something.